all right so welcome so in the previous video we explained the Maxwell's loop theorem simply by applying the catch up voltage law to electrical circuit analysis okay so in this video we are going to be applying everything we learned in the previous video to what um tackle the problem on this circuit so the question says calculate the values of the currents i1 i2 and voltage across the 30 ohm resistor using maxwell's loop method okay so um just like i explained in the previous video the maxwell loop method actually applies the catch off voltage law toward electrical analysis and the law simply says the sum of the entire voltage at a particular loop is always equal to zero considering potential drops when current flows through a resistor and also considering a potential gain uh, when a current flows from negative terminal to positive terminal and also a potential loss when a current flows from um, positive terminal to negative terminal now we have the direction of this current in this manner as can be seen so it means this current is actually flowing through this in this direction throughout the circuit so we can always indicate this as uh, this is the direction of current flow i1 okay this is the direction of current flow in this resistor also same current i1 I also have the same direction okay i1 so it goes in this manner that's the direction of current flow in the first loop same thing happens here the direction of current flow in the second loop is also in that manner as can be seen so it means current is flowing through this resistor this current is simply i2 also in this direction through the resistor is also i2 and then through in this same manner also i2 so we have the direction of current flow always and then the loop continues like that so this is loop one and this is loop two so we need to apply the catch-off voltage law um, to actually what find um, um, the each of the currents flow through or the resistor so each of these sources was given as 20 volts and this was also given as 80 volts so let's apply apply the catch-off voltage law simply kvl to loop one so loop one is actually the very first loop so i said if a current flows from negative terminal to positive terminal there's always a potential gain so this current i1 is moving from negative to positive so which means 20 volts is positive we we'll simply keep it as was well, 20 positive this same current i1 is flowing through 30 ohm resistor whenever a current flows through a resistor there's always going to be a potential drop so we we'll simply have minus um 30 times that current times i1 this is now a potential drop negative sign shows a potential drop this same current i1 flows through this resistor 10 ohm resistor but also observe that it's not just this current i1 that is flowing through this 10 ohm resistor we have current i2 also flowing through the 10 ohm resistor in the opposite direction as current i1 but since we are on loop one current i1 always comes first and again we know that whenever current flows through a resistor there's always a potential drop for that reason we put down our negative sign now we have two current flowing in reverse direction through the pot uh, potential difference of 10 ohm so we simply have i1 minus i2 now we're using i1 minus i2 simply because we are on loop one and the current that flows in loop one is simply what i1 but it is not only that current that is flowing through this resistor we have i2 also flowing through this resistor in opposite direction so it becomes i1 minus i2 times the value of the resistor which is in this case is 10 ohms so multiply by 10 okay so we simply have this so this is the whole potential difference or the whole voltage in this circuit or in this loop so the whole of this is actually equal to zero so if you expand this you're going to have 20 minus 30 i1 okay minus okay 10 okay this is simply minus into 10 multiplied by i1 gives us 10 i1 minus 10 i2 okay 10 multiplied by i2 gives us 10 i2 and this equal to zero so if we expand the bracket we have 20 minus 30 i1 minus 10 i1 gives us minus 10 i1 okay minus times minus size plus so we have plus 10 i2 the whole of this is actually equal to zero okay all right so from here now we have 20 okay 
minus 30 i1 minus 30 i1 actually give us um minus 40 i1 so we we'll have minus 40 i1 and then of course plus 10 i2 plus 10 i2 equals 0 simply call this equation 1 so that's the first equation so we we'll also apply the kvl now to loop 2 so simply apply Ketchoff's voltage law to loop 2 okay we apply kvl to loop 2 see the same thing now we are at loop 2 and we have current i2 flowing through this 10 ohm resistor but not just current i2 is flowing through we also have current i1 flowing through the same 10 ohm resistor but in opposite direction but since we are at loop 2 it means current 2 comes first so i2 comes so instead of i1 minus i2 it becomes i2 minus i1 but first of all you have current flowing through a resistor so there's always going to be what a potential drop so because of that we we'll attach a negative sign to it minus open bracket we have i2 first since we are loop 2 so it becomes i2 minus we also have this current i1 flowing but they are in opposite directions so it becomes i2 minus i1 okay multiplied by the voltage multiply by the potential difference which is 10 times 10 okay and then we have this 20 ohm um, we also have this current i2 flowing through this 20 ohm resistor so which means i said whenever a current flows through a resistor there is always going to be a potential drop so we have um, minus 20 times i2 20 i2 and then we have this current flowing through negative terminal to positive terminal since it flows from negative to positive, it's going to be what? A positive um, or potential gain. So we we'll simply have plus 80 volt, which is plus 8. And this is equal to 0. Okay, so let's expand this bracket. Now we have minus into 10 times I2 gives us 10 I2. Okay, minus 10 times I1 gives us 10 I1. Close bracket. Okay, minus 20 I2. Okay, plus. 80 volts and this is equal to zero so let's expand now with this negative sign minus times 10 i2 gives us minus 10 i2 minus times minus 10 i1 gives us plus 10 i1 okay minus 20 i2 okay plus 80 and that's equal to zero so i have here minus 10 i2 minus 20 i2 that will simply give me minus 30 i2 so i simply have minus 30 i2 plus 10 i1 okay plus 80 equals zero so if i rearrange this equation now uh, let's just rearrange let 80 come first i'll simply have 80 okay plus 10 i1 minus 30 i2 equals 0 so let's simply call this equation 2 notice now that equation 1 and equation 2 are actually two equations with two unknowns um, which are simultaneous so it's very easy for us to watch, use any method or any approach to solve this simultaneous equation you can use substitution you can use um, elimination you cannot as well use matrix method but i feel the very best way to use um very best method to use is simply the elimination method and to use the elimination method let's pick out these two equations over there and let's see how the elimination method works okay so i simply have the first equation 20 minus 40 i plus 10 i2 let's put it down here 20 minus 40 i 1 plus 10 i2 equals 0 this is equation 1 the second equation is simply 80 plus 10 i1 minus 30 i2 80 plus 10 i1 minus 20 i2 minus 30 i2 and that's equal to zero this is equation two okay, let me confirm that all right so it's correct now i want to apply the elimination method so you choose which of them you want to eliminate of course eliminating has to be what eliminating the unknown let's say i want to look for i2 and therefore i want to eliminate i1 all i will do is simply multiply through equation one 
by the coefficient of what i1 in equation 2. The coefficient of i1 in equation 2 is simply 10. So I will simply multiply, it's simply plus 10, sorry. So I will simply multiply the whole equation 1 by plus 10. So simply multiply this by plus 10. Okay, multiply by 10, simply 10. See the same thing. Okay, and again, I want to eliminate I1 also. So what I will do now is I will multiply the whole of equation 2 by the coefficient of, e of I1 in equation 1. The coefficient of I1 in equation 1 is simply what? Minus 40. So I will simply multiply the whole of this equation by minus 40. So by so doing, I can now easily eliminate I1 and then find the value of I2. Let's try it and see. So I will simply have here 20 multiplied by 10. That will simply give me 200 minus 40 multiplied by 10. That simply gives me 400 I1. Okay, plus 10 multiplied by 10. That simply gives me 100 I2. And this is equal to 0. You can call this equation 3. Same thing happens here now. I will multiply the whole equation of equation 2 by the coefficient of I1 in equation 1, which is actually minus 40. So I'll simply have 80 multiplied by minus 40. So that simply gives us minus 3,200. <coughs> I'll have here plus 10 multiplied by minus 40, which is simply giving me minus 400 I1 minus 30 multiplied by minus 40. Minus times minus becomes plus. 30 times 40 becomes 1,200 I2, and this is equal to 0. You can call this equation 4. So notice now that I can simply subtract equation 3 from equation 4 by simply putting a minus sign here. So subtracting 3 from 4, it becomes easier. I will simply have minus 3,200 minus 200. So I'm subtracting the whole of equation 3 from equation 4. That will simply give me here. Uh, minus 3200 minus okay let's put it down here minus 200 so this minus this okay i will have a minus 400 i1 minus minus 400 i1 i'll simply have this plus i'll have a plus 1200 I2 minus plus 1100 I2 and this is simply equal to 0 minus 0 still gives us 0 you have this so minus 3200 minus 200 simply gives us minus 3400 minus 400 I1 minus 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 becomes plus so you simply have minus 400 I1 plus 400 I1 and that's simply zero so that one is off okay minus minus is plus so it becomes minus 400 i1 plus 400 i1 which is actually what off that's zero so this one is off i have here now 1200 i2 minus 100 i2 that simply gives me plus 1100 i2 and the whole of this is equal to zero so i can simply send minus 3400 over to this side of the equation I'll simply have here left 1100 I2 equals 3400. So I can simply make now I2 subject. I2 becomes 3400 divided by 1100. So I have 3400 all over 1100. So this simply means that the second current I2 is now equal to. That simply gives us 3 points. 0, 0.04 amps so this becomes the value for the second current i2 so if i know i2 i can simply substitute the value into any of the equations either equation 1 equation 2 equation 3 or equation 4 to find the value of i1 any of them can go okay so let's let's do that and see so substitute i2 equals 3.04 amp into equation 1 okay let's put that down into equation 1 so we simply have uh, 20 minus 40 i1 20 
minus 40 i1 okay plus plus 10 i2 and i2 is simply 3.04 so simply plus 10 plus 10 into 3.04 which is equal to 0 so i have here 20 minus 40 i1 okay plus this becomes plus 30 point four equals zero so 20 plus 30.4 simply gives us 50.4 minus 40 i1 equals zero so i can simply send minus 40 i1 over here negative sign cross and equal to sign becomes positive i'm left here with 50.4 equals 40 i1 so simply make for i1 subject by dividing 2 by 40 therefore i1 is simply equal to 50.4 all over 40 and therefore i1 is equal to 1.26 amps so this becomes the current second and uh, the first current i1 or current in the first loop which is i1 all right so the second part of the equation says find the voltage across a 30 ohm resistor okay it's as simple as we know the current across the 30 ohm resistor which is i1 therefore voltage becomes 30 times i1 that gives us the voltage across the 30 ohm resistor let's do that over the other side and see so voltage across the 30 ohm resistor um, v is actually uh, 30 ohm times the current flowing through that resistor is simply i1 so 30 times i1 so this simply means voltage across that resistor is 30 multiplied by i1 gave us 1.26 1.26 and therefore that voltage is simply equal to 37.8 volts so this is the voltage across the 30 ohm resistor all right guys i hope you find this video very interesting and helpful please if you do i would like to get your thoughts in the comment section and of course if you're new to the channel don't forget to tap the subscribe button to keep getting updates on content as this i will see you in the next video with more questions on Ketchup's law or the Maxwell's loop theorem. Thanks and cheers.